What's going on Axie fam, Elijah here back with another video. Today I've got one I'm super excited about. I'm gonna be looking at a build that almost no one's playing and one that involves gloomy dice. Now I actually pushed into the top 50 with this build. I was the only one up there running a gloomy dice composition. Since then I've tried some stuff, you know, you play around, I'm at 120 right now, but no problem with that. We're happy to be up here near the top. And with 28 days left in the season, I just wanna let you guys know that the Origins Academy is live for anyone who hasn't heard yet. This is high level coaching, a monthly membership where you get to train with the best in the world. If you're sick of losing, if you're ready to be a top player in Origin, this is the place for you. It's $35 a month. There's no long-term commitment. You get four exclusive coaching videos per month, one exclusive live stream per month with the best player in the world, 1437, and so much more amazing information to take your game to the next level. There's over $80,000 for first place this season, $40,000 for second, $28,000 for third, and the leaderboard is stacked with huge potential. So if you want a shot at that and you want to crush it and chase your Axie dreams, we're here to help. There is a link in the description below to learn more, or you can just go to meditate.gg backslash academy. I hope to see you all there. So let's jump into the video. Now, this is a very unique experimental comp. I was over 70% win rate with it. I think I was even close to above 80. I had dropped to like the 300 range trying some other builds and then I switched to this and was able to skyrocket back into the top 50. Now, it's gonna be hard for you to find these axes in the marketplace. So this is to give you a lot of ideas about what you might wanna try with your own set of axes. I know that this midliner is a one of one and I actually bought it for an aqua team I was running. Wow, eggshell, I could put gloomy dice on this and I could run aquas at the front and the back. And then I got more creative, talked to some teammates of mine and we came up with this. Pigeon pose beast at the front line with a really fantastic move set, very balanced. I've got cottontail for energy. Axie Kiss is going to help me finish off that backliner that I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure on with the Pigeon Post, which puts a blackmail in my opponent's hand. Chubby, again, a little AoE involved in this build, which is really nice. And then Dual Blade, a fantastic card to deal with those sustain comps and help limit their shielding capabilities. The midliner, there we go, baby, gloomy dice. We've got this bad boy for some taunt juggling. He doesn't have the pigeon post, but generally I can either draw the eggshell to give my beast time, or by that point, I might have already drawn the pigeon post. So the odds are still pretty good to execute this the way I'd like to. Notice how I have another curse card in sleepless. Notice how I have cute bunny to put fear on my opponent. These are the nuanced things when you're balancing it team, you want to think about synergy. I've got Inkling, right? So I can drop a few curse cards into my opponent's deck for their second cycle. Meanwhile, I'm casting Fear and Hex on them every other round in the first cycle to make it very difficult for them to play efficiently. And then on the back, I've got my second Pigeon Post. I've got Gil, Lamb, Sleepless, all with Bubble Paste, Triple Paste with Heart of the Ocean to give me such a huge damage boost across all his axes in the game. And again, this comes into play when I'm putting that pressure on the back line with the pigeon post, I need assistance in damage, especially because this isn't really a raw base damage team. None of my moves are doing too much. I don't have any damage boosters really. So this heart of the ocean is actually clutch. And what I wanted to showcase in this video is that I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this the Mystic Rune Endgame, where we might see Mystic Runes across all three axes on a team. As more people get creative, as we see new ways to play and ways to enhance our axes and our comps, it's very possible that some really unique stuff starts to show up in these last few weeks. Finally, you can see I have a triple energy gain. I just think that the more that you can fit Nemos and Cottontails into your aggressive builds, the better. Luckily, I'm able to throw three into this, which can really help me out. And yeah, I've been having fun. You know, that's what this game's all about try to have fun try to get creative and I want to show you how this actually played out in the arena. So first up, I'm going to look at a game I played against Trix Madfam, who's currently ranked seven in the world. I believe when I faced him, he was like top one or two. So it's very interesting to see whether or not this team has chops to hang with something as powerful as a top three composition and one as unique as his. He's actually running a Gaia's Embraced Imposter Beast. By imposter, I mean it's actually a plant so he can put this rune on it that gives all of his other axes and extra 50 HP. 
He's got taunt, innocent lamb, confident. This is a support axie that brings a ton of value for the rest of his team. And to make up for all these zero costs it has, you can notice that his front and mid both have two costs on it. This is an absolutely disgusting beast composition. He is able to stack rage so quickly. He's able to go into fury form very fast. Um, and as we can see here in round two, I managed to get a little chubby value straight out of the gate. I'm also able to avoid putting this beast below 75% HP threshold for Sheba. He does not draw Sheba. However, he does draw little branch. Big damage goes onto my frontline Pango beast. Oh my God, what a draw for me in turn four. Now let's break it down. I do have Sleepless with Bubbles, which is a really valuable card for me too. So I have to decide here between that and one pigeon post or two pigeon posts. And let me just tell you, if you're playing a composition like this against a backline reckless hunter beast or really any backline beast, you play your pigeon post. I mean, generally you want to play these versus most matchups. There are exceptions like Aquas with Bloodlust. Maybe it's better to just go through the front if I have a really nice high damage hand. It's not so much worth it to play like a single pigeon post. Ah, here he draws his Sheba. He's up to nine rage stacks on his backliner, but I do have those two black nails in his hand. So he's a little stumped right here. He's going to play the Zeal to try and draw a really nice beast card for his backliner next. I think he plucked Ronan with it. And then he returns his black nails. He can't afford to play one right now and risk his beast back here with nine stacks getting killed, but we draw Axie Kiss, and I wanna talk about this play really quickly. I was thinking, who do I target? His back, mid, his front? Now, it might seem intuitive to go for the back line. However, I know that this thing is going into fury form one way or another, no matter what. And then he's going back to zero stacks. I also haven't seen a cactus yet from this midline. So I'm factoring that in as well. If he does play cactus, it makes it very easy for me to kill him in the next round with him having axi kiss. So that's why I went for the mid. I'm gonna follow up with a gill up front. And here we can see the bubbles coming into play, soon to be putting big damage across his entire team. I get the eggshell off at the mid and look at the pigeon post completely screwing him up still. He did go for the Ronin and he's gonna play Belieber. I'm down to 214 HP and look how good Trix is these days. He knows the damage exactly. He returns just one blackmail knowing that that's enough to get the kill with the Ronin with 220 damage. And then he plays the other one, but he did do the single return to make sure that he used an energy and got the damage bonus in with Ronan that you gain per energy that you spend in a turn. I'm going to bubble up with Gills, with Oranda, and actually pull off the kill here on the back line. This is why I went for that Axie Kiss at the mid. It worked out for me that he didn't draw Cactus there either to divert. His hand was so screwed up with Pigeon Post that look how slow his draw is. We're in turn eight. He still has eight cards left to go. So everything kind of going according to plan here with this type of build that I'm running. Tons of manipulation. He gets an Axie Kiss throws it on my backline aqua and is gonna have a pretty nice round not quite enough to kill my beast he plays his other pigeon post finally he's got so much fury potential that if i don't kill him here probably i'm gonna be screwed in the next round we play one sword up front i don't need to play the second to kill this beast because i've got a bubble on my frontline beast as well so i can go with the pigeon post to screw up his hand even more although i don't even think i need it because i can play nyan 20 damage goes across both of his axes and I get the flush kill to wipe out a very tough opponent, a very tough composition, and one of the most popular that you're gonna see at the top of the leaderboard. This has been somewhat of a triple beast killer because of how much I can manipulate with Pigeon Post, with the curses that the Dusk Gloomy Dice are casting on such an aggressive build. Beasts both use attack cards and skill cards, which is what Hex targets. So if they play Confident, they still get a Confused card from it as well. It's been super fun to play against that particular matchup. So let's take a look at one more game against another very popular type of team, which is Aquas. Now, normally you see this run with the Pango Beast up front, but he's actually elected to go super heavy on the curse cards with Inkling and Sleepless on the front line on another aqua as well triple bloodlust which is kind of crazy but i can see how this team must be a real pain for a lot of opponents he's got the anemones for healing too which kind of make up for the fact that this isn't a pango beast and you can see 410 hp maxed out on hp which is no joke so let's see how this goes down he's gonna play sleepless and inkling here 100 of the time to start to screw up my deck for the next cycle so our gloomy dice there i think just gave him one confused card nothing too incredible but i also think we played 
cute bunny in round one, which is why the fear is staying stuck on this frontliner. It's such a nice addition to have one cute bunny on this team. You can almost permanently put fear on the frontline axie of your opponent. And then for me here in turn three, very obvious, we play sleepless, followed by goldfish to draw a card, and we get to utilize one of our Nemos here with a dual blade. I'm gonna go ahead and 2x this one so we can kind of see what I really wanna showcase, and that's the mid to late stages effects of gloomy dice. In turn five, I'm gonna play lamb, eggshell, and here just to utilize the Nemo and get maximum value per energy that I am able to play, I'm gonna go for the chubby for two energy. It's still pretty damn great, 150 damage across his whole team. That's some pretty nice base stats there. Plus I'm already hurting his back line a lot because he played that pigeon post. So he's now down to 72 HP back there. Phenomenal draw for us here that he drew two Nemos. We're very happy about that. But look at these confused, these curse cards he's getting for everything he's playing. He's gonna get one more here. This is just joy, right? When you see this in a game, you're just thinking, oh my gosh, my rune is doing so much work right now. Another confused card, he plays the Nemo to return the midliner Nemo because he wants value from it. But now he's got 11 cards in his draw pile that's brutal on turn seven. I'm almost done with my deck. I play the Axie Kiss on the back. This is actually gonna allow me to kill his backliner. A gill and a pigeon post. The backliner drops, the frontliner drops. This midliner is standing facing a 3v1 situation. Yeah, he has his Nemo, but what does it even matter when your hand looks like this? Too confused, a blackmail totally screwed up draw for him. Now he does have a lot of HP and he did put a ton of curse cards in my deck as well. It was 21 there that I started this cycle with. So that's gonna be a lot for me to have to get through and a lot of manipulation to get through. But luckily we draw a two cost revenge card, put him down to 120 HP. It looks like I'm not gonna get the bubble value from my midliner as he'll secure the kill here. He'll go sword, sword, chip away at my back line. But as long as I can get a decent enough draw on this next pull. And here we go, a bunch of curse cards and some revenge swords, not really all that great, but with the bubble doing 30 extra damage, we'll just play one sword and it's enough to secure the win. And there you have it, two super popular comps, two victories, a really fun team. I hope this gave you guys some ideas. Now that midline dusk, you could just go on the marketplace and search for one that doesn't have goldfish or eggshell, but perhaps just has pigeon post and some other moveset like tiny turtle, maybe pigeon post and cute bunny if that's out there. And triple pigeon post might actually be even better. I don't know, I haven't played it very much, but it certainly seems to have a lot of potential. If you can find a frontline pango pigeon, pigeon at the midline, pigeon on the back line. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the Meditate Academy to take your game to the next level. Link in the description below. Love you guys. Catch you in the next video. Peace.